What's up, headbangers? Welcome to another episode of the Talk Louder podcast, where we geek out on all things rock and roll. Hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Leave us your likes and comments. You can also leave likes and comments on our Facebook page. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, and Instagram at talklouder underscore podcast. And you can also find us on our website, talklouderpodcast.com. I am Metal Dave Glessner, along with my co-host Jason McMaster, and today's a big day on the Talk Louder podcast. Oh, yeah. Yeah, big day. We've had some big guests on the show. Big day, big point. four. Exactly. You see big, where I'm going with big. that. Yep. You see where I'm going with that. Uh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've had some big guests, but we've never had a member of the big four until today. Uh, today we have, specifically, we have Frank Bello, the bass player from Anthrax. Uh, and we're honored to have him. He's out promoting his autobiography. It's called Fathers, Brothers, and Sons. It's, uh, I think it's out now. I got an advanced copy. I've read it. It's a great read. Uh, we're going to talk to Frank about his book, the inspiration behind it. Uh, we'll pick his brain a little bit on anthrax because we're nerds and we have to. Uh, but mainly, I want to talk to him about the book. It's a really good read. It's a very um, open-hearted type of read. I walked away feeling like I got to know him a lot better, almost on a personal level. And I think that's the mark of a great book when you uh, get to know somebody on a level besides just being the guy on the album. So uh, yeah. we'll talk to him all about how he... I have, I have yet to read the book, I guess. <clears throat> My copy is in the mail. <laughs> and, your, 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 um, your copy is caught in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, all caught, caught in the mail. Oh, right. caught so, in the mail. You know, <clears throat> not. So <laughs> waiting uh waiting to get my non-existent free copy. But here's the deal. Um the fact that we have Frank on the show today is so exciting for me. The the I guess brushes the the short brushes with greatness that I've you know times I've spent with Frank have been a, a part of my uh story campfire storytelling for yeah. 30 years. Um my old band Watchtower opened for them for Anthrax on the Spreading the Disease tour. I was I helped them load in. I was, you know, the little kid in the candy store kind of thing. And it was, they were still fairly new, you know, two records out and an EP or something like that, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, you know, it was just fun to see them do all that. I remember somebody hopping on the stage and they had this banner, this scrim on the drum riser, and it was handmade. I mean, it was 1986, so... You know, we're, someone had to hand make that. They probably paid back then what would have probably been a lot of money. And it was just this yellow anthrax logo sewn on this drum th- uh, drum riser scrim, and someone jumped on stage and tore it off. It was probably Velcro, tore it off and jumped back in the crowd. Charlie stopped the song and dove in after him. <laughs> so little things like that are so real, and that wouldn't even happen now. Right, you know, right. When you're up and coming and you're still an underground, kind of like quickly becoming a living legend, et cetera. Yeah. But there's, you know, and there's a few more things like that and that I could talk about. And maybe we'll be able, maybe we'll have some time to talk more about that. But I want it to be more and all about Frank. So, yeah. Uh, I've been with you a couple of times when we've uh, been lucky enough to hang out with Anthrax. Yeah. Uh, so I have some stories myself. I've got a great Frank story specific well, to Frank that I want to say, share. Let's save them. Uh, no, I'm going to save it. Yeah, I'm going to yeah, save yeah. it. I'm just, uh, I'm just alluding to it since you're talking about yeah. past history with Frank. Going to uh, be a great episode today here on the uh, Talk Louder podcast. Yeah, let's get into it. <laughs> Yay! Hey guys! Hey, what's up? How are you, man? What's going on? Not much. How are you? I'm good. I'm um, trying to do um, just clean the shit from the backyard for the dogs. Yeah, <laughs> well, the glamorous life of a rock star. Little Dude, things. It's the only way to live. So, you know, <laughs> it's it's getting to be winter here in New York. Ah. I'm not ready as usual. Um, I'm over it. I've I've. That's my dehumidifier. Let me shut this thing off real quick. Hold okay. on. Okay. Not bothering <laughs> us, but okay. 
One thing I forgot to shut off. I'm in my basement as I as I live. This is where I live now, dude. I live in my basement. Fucking. <laughs> Well, we don't have basements in Texas. The ground's too hard for them to dig beneath the surface. So um, it's cold in here. I, I have the heat on. You know, I have a specific heat. You know, because nobody knows they're going to live in their fucking basement. For, you know, pandemic. <laughs> nobody knows this shit, right? <laughs> right. So, so I had you know I had the heating thing installed and all that stuff. You think it would be good? It's still fucking raw. It's <laughs> oh, why are you in the basement? Do you have a house upstairs? Who you got? My, <clears throat> my wife is upstairs working. I was just oh, saying. Home. Yeah, he which is to, cool. So yeah, I'm respectful. I, I can yes. get loud down here and all that good stuff, you know? Okay. Yeah. Got yeah. It. I thought yeah. she had kicked you to the basement and you're now I got to She's locked you in down there. So not she's, yet. She, she's patient with me, but not that patient. I, I you know <laughs> what I mean? It's, I, we've been married 23 years and it's for me, man. It's like, um, I know the look, you know, yeah. when she has a business <laughs> well, meeting, you know, like, we like, all know the look and, and I'll get the look and I'll say, okay, I'm going downstairs. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congrats yeah. on 23 years. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah dude. Um, it's, you know, it, thank you. It's, uh, I don't look at it because I, I come from a divorced parents. So my thing, when I, when I got married, I wanted to make sure it was right. You know what I mean? So yeah. it took me a while, but um, it was, it, thankfully it was right. And look, whoever deals with me deserves a medal, period. <laughs> Bottom line, you know. I think we. He, I think all three of us yeah, can we, say that we kind of have that same patch, yeah. right? The, the same club <laughs> patch, sort of have that. It's a big deal when they can tolerate what we do in this yeah. music lifestyle. You know, it's and just my personality. You know, I'm an idiot, so it, it is what it is. I, I, I don't know why. Far, I said, why? Far, She's far from it. Me. Far from it, my friend. My friend, <laughs> I, uh, uh, you you have treated uh, me and my friends uh, in the room included. Every time we've bumped into each other out on the road, you've always been so nice and respectful. And thanks, thank yeah. you. How, yeah. how yeah, you man. doing, man? How you guys, just, how's everything? You, yeah, you, you feeling yeah. good? Everybody healthy? All that good stuff, you know? Well, well, well yeah. You should ask. As healthy as as I can be, I tested positive. Oh, how? I mean, so, yeah. Like, what? Where did it come from, though? That's what I'm trying to get the background of people and getting it. Yeah. So, I. Uh, you know, we're in Austin. I went to Fort Worth to do a gig with the Dangerous Toys guys, and I came cool. back. A couple of days went by. I was normal. I went to work. Everything was fine. A couple of sniffles started to happen, and then, like, by – that would have been a Saturday. So by, by, by Tuesday morning, I was like, you know what? I ought to do this home kit testing. And I did, and I tested positive. And like I said, I'm feeling fine. You look fine, dude. You look perfect. Thanks. You know, normal. Thanks. Yeah. But the point is, you got to test. You got to, as soon as you feel something weird, you got to, some people just blow it off and they let it go and they become a walking zombie super spreader. So, wow. you know, we're, we're taking precautions. Everybody's, I'm alerting the band and everybody we're in contact. Cool. Good for with. you, man. Good. Yeah. It's just a matter of, uh, you know, people being aware and doing, I call totally. it doing the work. You got to do you the do work it. to take care of each other. So I'm all about it. I'm I, I'm actually having my doctor's appointment next week. I'm going to ask her if I can get the third shot because I'm autoimmune. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I I'm going to I don't know if I'm because I had mine. My, my second shot was five months ago. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm going to ask her if I can get. Look, I'm all about it. <laughs> as yeah. far as I'm, I don't preach to anybody, but no. I want to fucking I want to have people live again. I want to be able to hang hang with you and say, yeah. dude, how are you? Fucking, what's going yeah. on? You know? Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. I'm not preaching. I'm not. Look, I believe in science. I just want I want to be back to where we can fucking tour again. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's whatever time. it takes. It's time. Yeah. Whatever it takes. Yeah. 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 Our life is flying by us. You realize that, dude? This, yeah. This, now we're going into years. It's not months. This is years we're going into here. Yep. yep. Right. Right. I call this the third year. I kind agree. of like when you think 2019, then all of a sudden, boom, this thing. Yeah. And then like, what? It's going to be about to be 22, yo. Dude, dude <laughs> it's, it's so true. It's so, yeah. because yeah. think about it. We're in, and it, it sneaks up. Doesn't it sneak up on you? We're, it's November, dude, right? It yeah. snuck up on us. We've been living like this. Look, I, there's a reason why I'm in my basement. Yes, I go out. I'm covered up. I'm a lunatic. I'm a lunatic. My hands, I don't know about your guys' hands with the, with all the creams and shit. Like, dude, the alcohol in my hands, I'm getting cut up so badly now. So when you play, it's like, dude, I'm fucking hurting now because yeah. the, the alcohol stuff from all that shit we put Drying on you out. Antibacterial stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's a scary time. So, mm -hmm. and now, now people are mad. Everybody's just mad. Yeah, yeah, and so what kind of society? It, it's just bad for everybody. People need to move on now. Life, 
How about your sides? I don't care what side you're on. I want people to get together. It's really, it's time, man. It's time. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And do, sure. do the work. Do whatever you got to do to be together, but you got to be safe too. I agree, dude. I'm yeah. right there with you. you know, yeah. hopefully I believe in it. Work. I believe in it. And I know that it can happen, but you can't just go willy nilly on it. No, I agree. I, I'm all yeah. about it. I'm, I'm a science guy. So for me, <laughs> look, they know they've read a lot more books than I have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I'll go with that guy who's, who's done the time, right? Speaking yeah. of books, speaking of books, you nice, got one nice of them things, don't you? Yeah. Got yeah. one of these things. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's weird to do a book instead of a record, right? You know, and yeah. promote and do this whole promotion thing for a book because, let's be honest, you put your life on, a, on, on paper. My life is on paper. You guys know more than a lot of people know now because the thing is, what I wanted to do is, it's cathartic. I wanted to get it out and get it all out because this shit was, um, through all the therapy and stuff I've had from abandonment and all that stuff, you know, I said, you know, there was this time, I'm in this this basement as I am now. Joel, Joel and I, my, my co-writer, Joel McIver, we wrote it and I was here just doing it just like we are now, jotting things down, what works, what doesn't work over a year of during COVID. This, so this time we've been talking about doing this for eight years. Um, wow. And when COVID hit and we were, New York, I remember we were on a lockdown here and I, I called up Joel and said, man, this, this is probably the, the right time to start this. If you have the time, let's do it. And then it just, it had its own life, man. It was, you know, it was good for my head too. Cause I was going fucking crazy like everybody else mm -hmm. yeah. creatively. So yeah, you could only write so many songs and do all that stuff. This was another outlet for me. And, um, plus, you know, all the shit that I've had in my head all these years through therapy and about abandonment, it really helped getting it all out. And once, you know, Joel has this great way of lighting a fire under my ass with stories. He, he knows a lot about my life, which is awesome. Um, so and tell once us part of them, they came flowing out. Tell, you know? tell us the title of the book. It's uh, Fathers, Brothers, and Sons, correct? Yeah, Fathers, and Brothers, and Sons. You know, and it, look, I did this book um, because I've been through a lot of therapy about abandonment and stuff like that. And a lot of people are hurting. And I wrote it for my son, for my son to say, I have a 15 year old son. I want him to know that it's okay. You can get knocked down in life and you can get up. You got to get up and you got to brush yourself off, especially in these times we're living in right now. So I thought it'd be appropriate for that. I thought it'd be really smart to just say people to people, man, yeah, life's going to knock you down, but you got to, you know, you can get up and brush yourself off and move on towards tomorrow. I, th I think it's really important. I'm yeah. not a preacher. I'm just, I'm telling you my story and how the persistence kept me going and yeah. just the, the drive. And I think it's important. I got, I have, I'm very lucky with the band. I know that. Very fortunate to have a band. A lot of hard work, but it showed me that if you get yourself up, brush yourself off, work hard and go for it, there could be a better tomorrow. And that's, I, I want that instilled in my son. And from what I'm hearing, thankfully, I'm getting a lot of great comments and reviews for the book and uh, people are really taking to it and identifying with that. And it, that means more than anything. If one person out of whatever books we sell can, can, get that message and feel better about their tomorrow. That's, that's life, man. Cause I think you go into a reflective time after yes. all this stuff at a certain age and with all the stuff we've all been through, it's like, yeah, I mean, people are hurting right now. Why not yeah. just say, say something positive and maybe uh, help them in their life. You know, let, let me, let me add to the accolades that uh, you've received so far. I just finished the book uh, the other day. And the thing that I took away from it was, uh, this over, uh, th this overriding sense of gratitude. Like, I feel like you are genuinely grateful for all the things that have happened in your life the, the, and, and the, the people that have helped shape your, your life and your success. And as you say, put in the hard work. Uh, but I, I felt like after I read the book that one of the driving inspirations possibly for writing the book among other things, was that you wanted to let people know how grateful you are for the people that have helped support you and put you where you are. And that came, that really came across. And that's that's not easy to do. But there was a certain sincerity in the printed word that I got, you know, and I thank you. And it sounds like other people are getting it as well. And I think that makes a great story because we all know Frank, the bass player from Anthrax, but I want to get to know Frank, the human being 
and what brought him to the point that he landed in my record collection. And, <laughs> and, and these are the things I got from the book. There's a genuine sense of, of, of gratitude. So See, you can even hear it in your tone. Thank you. You got it. I understand that. And thank you. That's exactly, you hit it on the head. See anybody, look, you could put out a book. It's a rock and roll book. Yeah. There are great rock and roll story stories in there and they're fun. And I've had a great career with anthrax, but I thought, you know, let's go a little further. Let's go a little further inside me. And I think because I think something that I went through could help people, you know, get from this place to another if they're really hurting. And, and I, I, I'm very grateful that this this whole music scene was there for me. Look, the, the metal community, I love them. You know, they've been there for me since day one. Uh, that's I've been I've been very fortunate to be part of that team, part of that you know that effort. Um, that was you know a big deal to me get, to get me off that floor to have this outlet of metal and music in my life. It was very important to say, how am I going to play if I don't get up? Right? Yeah. How am I gonna how, how am I gonna get to tomorrow if I don't get up? I, how am I gonna pick up my bass and play? Um, it was all very one on one, and like I have to do this uh, because if I don't do this, I can't do this. I can't play, and that's life to me. And yeah. look, if my yeah. playing makes people happy, that's another great thing. You know, it's again, it's about being very fortunate and be very thankful. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's it's paying it forward. I guess I'm at the age of, of that. I'm, I've lived a, a you know a life that people call it interesting peaks and valleys like everybody else nobody's crying here but this is this is the story and i want people to know that they can move on and i i think you got it and i appreciate that bro really yeah Thank absolutely you. well it, it, it was very it was very evident it really came off the page and 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 i thought that was really cool because again i you can read all the rock and roll books about the parties and the bands and i have trust me i've got a whole stack of them right there there's a lot of great ones totally. there's a lot of great ones but I really did enjoy the fact that I felt like I got to know you a little bit on a personal level. Well, and that, so one of the driving forces for this book, again, was, um, and I want you to tell, but uh, your, your father left the family at, when you were very young. Yeah. You were raised, as you say in the book, by uh, very strong women. You've had very strong women in your life. And um, so so tell me a little bit about, you know, why why would you bring that to the surface and put that in the book because it's it's got to be such a painful thing to to put on the page um especially when you seem to at least as, from an outsider perspective you seem to have overcome it i guess to a degree here's why because i believe i'm pro girl i'm pro woman I, I believe they should be celebrated uh i grew up with in a house with very strong people when my when my dad took off Drop, that was the dropping of the ball. They picked it up and ran with it. I think that needs to be noted for all women. There's a lot of single women out there that are my heroes. Really, think about it. My, I, I moved in with my mom. And we had, she had four kids underneath me, five kids total. I was the oldest. Wow. No money. Welfare. That was even before welfare. There was just no money in the house before my mother signed up to welfare. So we had no money. We lost the house. We moved into a lower income housing area. Let's face it. And I got my ass kicked every day on the way to school. I say this in the book. Yeah. I learned the hard way um, of, of losing all that stuff. So that all those scars, believe me, they build up. Um, and I know a lot of people go through that. And and strong women, man, they, they pick up the ball, man. They, they raise their children. They stay. They stay, man. It's, it's just so important. I'm not preaching here. This is coming from the inside of a guy who's there. So these, these women stand up strong, they work, they feed, they nurture, they housing, they house you. Come on, man, that, that was me. So my mother took on five kids. I went to go live with my, my grandmother because I was literally getting my ass kicked every day. It wasn't, it wasn't gonna work because I wasn't gonna survive, to be honest. So yeah. I moved back to the Bronx with my grandmother and this is how the story goes. That house, my grandmother is Charlie Benanti, the drummer of Anthrax. Yeah. His mom, his mom. So yeah. Charlie is he's my uncle. Really, yeah. we grew up like brothers, though. So I grew up in that house with Charlie, who had music. He was a great drummer to begin with. That showed me the the world of music, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, and that was a very nurturing, and I could call it no pun intended, my safe home. It was yeah. very important to me. But also, my aunt Lori was in that house. Another strong woman who really took the ball because after my dad took off, these these women 
these women were there and they really showed me the way of how to be a decent human in society. And I, I think they should be celebrated. So that's a big part of the book. Yeah. And, and I, I feel like, uh, again, there's this thing, there's this feeling, this emotion that comes off the page. I, I feel like I was with you when I'm reading these passages, when you talk about working at the deli, or when you talk about these amazing family gatherings that you had over the holidays and stuff like that. And then fast forward to the anthrax days when you're talking about being side stage and watching Pantera and Rex comes over and gives you a shot. I mean, the way the way you convey everything in the book makes me feel like I'm really there. And so the rock and roll stuff is all is all fine and good. I love that. I'm a geek for that sort of stuff. But I really enjoyed the bits about the family gatherings and how good the food was. And you're very specific and detailed about it, which, again, tells me um, it, it made an impression on you. And you're trying to share that. And you succeeded. Absolutely. Well, when yeah. we started the book, Joel and I, the first thing I said to him, I said, look, if I want to talk about my life, I like it to be me speaking. This is all me. And Joel's great with this. He just lets me go. Um, and it'll, it'll, put, it'll stop me when I have to. And it's, it's great the way we worked it out. Uh, I just wanted to take I want. I said, the first thing I want to do is make believe we're at a bar, sitting down with a beer or a coffee, and we just want to talk. And thankfully, the reviews we're getting here, which is great. And that's exactly what I wanted to convey. And it's happening. People are feeling like, like you just said, and it's a great compliment. So thank you for that. I really, really just want to be one on one with you, and yeah. just to tell you my life. I want to bring you into, I want to bring you into my grandmother's house yeah. in those great days, like a Scorsese movie. That's why I bring him up a lot in the book. Yeah, it's got, like a Scorsese. I want you to see the three colored cookies that she cooked, and I almost want you to take it, taste it, and have the have the taste on your tongue as I take you through that because they were so detailed. And the flavor, and as I, as I say it, I'm, I'm watering my mouth right now, just so you know. Yeah. Um, it's so important to me for you to take it, you know, like Scorsese would. He would he would take you through that. I learned from that. I said, these are very beautiful. These are beautiful times in my life. And yeah. I, I was very fortunate. So when I why not celebrate it and make people see how fortunate I was and how great this woman, my grandmother, and my family was to me after the abandonment. And this is what, this is what brought me through my life to bring me to a better place. And I just want to see how strong my family was and I'm thankful for it. Yeah. I mean, I was ready to ask for seconds of the eggplant, you know. Oh, the <laughs> eggplant, my, my grandma, uh, God rest her soul, the eggplant was the best. I say <laughs> that in the book, but it, 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 was, the, it was the best and I, I miss her dearly. Um, and you know what? I think everybody has something like that that can relate to in their family. There's yeah. somebody strong in their life. And that's that, that was my strength, honestly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, want to I think everyone's going to be able to relate somehow. And as, if anything, the book's going to make them hungry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, then, then I've done my job, man. For, for yeah. me, I'm, I'm an eater. So the, all right. life is this short, man. I want to get it all. You know, I want to get it all. So, uh, yeah, you know, again, this is about connection. I'm not looking. I didn't have to do a book to, you know, oh, this is my big rock and roll lifestyle. It's like, look. It, it for me, it's just better to to say who I am and just say maybe this thing could maybe a couple of words in this book can make people identify and say, "Wow, oh, well Frank did it. Why can't I do it?" To get you know, if I'm down in down in the dumps, if you're down I wanna, in, I want inter to interrupt just for just sure. for a second because you you also had you know heavy music, loud heavy music as another outlet to release a lot of pent up. Oh things and you had a fan you were with family members while you're in the rehearsal room pre-production in the studio on the stage on the bus all, all the time you had this family with you and you still have this th that family your anthrax family which yeah. is your because you're related official you know technically you, all the time it's family yeah so when you lost your brother they were able to back you up and almost like hold you there so you could do and and be positive with you and you you wrote and sang this song uh on the anthrax record about your your brother anthony was his name yeah. anthony yeah. yeah and and i saw the tour right when that record came out and uh you know my expression to you about that is the same it's very very important that your your anthrax family was there for you to like go no you should do this song it's got to be on the record not a, lamp, a lot of bands would be able to do that because of maybe the material is 
uh, you know, not fitting to what it is, but, you know, get the hell out of here. You know, it it's family. So the songs are telling who you guys are, even when they're about something that's, you know, horrific or, or happy, sad, you know, covers any ground of any kind of emotion that those kind of songs need to be on heavy metal records. So the world doesn't keep giving headbangers a bad rap. I totally agree with you. You, you hit it on the head right there because for me, my anthrax family, again, this is all about family, this book. So yeah. Yeah, my family at home. Yes. The anthrax family who I've been more, I've been with them more in my life than my normal family at home. Yeah. Right. Let's face it. Now, when this tragic thing, and for those people who are watching right here, they, they don't know, unfortunately, on March, 26, March 25th, 1996, my brother Anthony was murdered with three bullets uh, in the Bronx, New York. Somebody shot him down. It was a whole deal. We had to go to courts, trials, horrible stuff. I don't wish on my worst enemy to ever be dragged through the courts as we were and have to almost like defend the person that's being that was murdered. It was, that's a whole that you can read the book. You'll understand it. But um, <coughs> my family of anthrax were there for me. Uh, my outlet, and you hit it on the head. They were there for me when I needed them. So when after he died, um, you're looking. You, you're just searching why. What, what reason? I never got a chance to say goodbye to him. Never. Nothing. It was horrible. So there was a tour, Anthrax tour, booked three weeks after that. It was booked for months. And if we didn't do it, we would have lost a shitload of money. We would have lost our shirts. It was a lot, a lot of money. People out of work. I couldn't do that. Uh, so they, they just said, let's cancel the tour. I said, I talked to my mom and she says, no, you should work. You should get out there. Anthony, will, Anthony was, my brother Anthony was a big fan of the band. He would never want me to, to lay down on this. So I did the tour and I... Uh, all I asked the guys was, look, just, you know, because I am I need to get my shit, to get my head together. Just let me go to my room and cry. And when, I, when it's showtime, pull me out, go play the show, and I'll go back home. I'll go to the room. So I wrote this song called Pieces in, in Japan, in the hotel in Japan. And it was really um, saying goodbye to my brother, the chance that I never had. So and it's on volume eight. It's a hidden track on volume eight. And my brothers in Anthrax were big enough to let me, as you just said, it was. It's not a heavy metal song. It's no. a, it's it's a mean and acoustic guitar. Really, that's what it is. Saying goodbye to my brother, um, and they let it, and I and they put it. Well, we all put it as a hidden track on the on the record. And a lot of people who hear that song, thankfully, um, you know, they connect with it because something that went through they went through in their life, and that means more than anything because it actually helps people. Now, when I hear when I hear that, when people come up to me and shows it, that pieces. That song pieces helped me with the death of my mom, my dad, my brother. It makes me feel great just because it, 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 it did. It made people feel better. It made be, that's what music's supposed to do. It makes you feel good. Yeah. And in a time of sorrow like that, if a piece of music could get that out of you, all good. The song was a prayer that you needed to say. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. And I still, you know, and I'm, I'm doing some, um, some uh, shows, some events for this book. And people have written in and um, asking me if we do that song because it's in the book. Yeah. Um, and I've been playing it. And it's it's really connecting. It's, it's hard wow. to sing, to be honest. Yeah. It's hard to get those words out. But yeah, I was talking to Anthony. But um, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad it's out there. I'm glad it, um, that people are getting it. Yeah. Do you feel like it's uh, not to take you to the moment when you're in mid song, but do you, do you feel yourself when you're about to choke on it? Totally. I yeah. feel... You know, I can't. You know, there's a there's a line that says, "I feel you with me. I feel you everywhere." Because for me, in my br my brain, it helps me feel better, whether you believe in this stuff or not. I just feel like he's with me all the time. Because he's yeah. Anthony was very much my protector in life. He used to come to the Anthrax shows as like almost like a bodyguard. Well, Frank, you all right? You know, making sure everything was all right. Every, the band loved him. He's one of the good guys uh, that's not here anymore. So you would have loved mm -hmm. him. He would have loved you. He would you would have been loving talking to him. He's just one of those guys you just immediately get in get involved with he's just a good dude you know rest yeah. of the show yeah um i i, I want to get on to some some lighter uh topics within well, the book but but first i before we go there since we're on the subject of your brother there there was another part in the book that i was unaware of but um the death of your brother obviously took you to a very dark place but it took you to a darker place than maybe a lot of people realize um 
you were actually out on the streets trying to hunt down the people that killed your brother. And fortunately, you never found them. <laughs> um, and I say that because, as you say in the book, your life could have really gone upside down had you succeeded in your mission. And not only would your life be turned upside down, but all these strong women that you talk about that help put you where you are, they would have suffered yet another really painful loss. Um, mm -hmm. So take us there for just briefly and, and you know, and, and maybe most importantly, tell us how you got out of that headspace. Well, I, I'm not proud of this at all. And, you know, I'll be really honest with you guys, um, talking about people not knowing it. My wife didn't know this. My wife, my family, I didn't tell anybody about this. My wife didn't find out about this story we're talking about right here until we were going through the pages of the book, you know, to, for trials and making sure it's okay and all that stuff. And um, she goes, and she looked at me, you did this? And I'll go back to for the people that are watching this. So after my brother was murdered, uh, I snapped. As honest, I'm not a tough guy. I'm saying it right off the bat. I'm not a tough guy. But look, where I grew up, an eye for an eye. That's the way it is. So um, I snapped. I went dark. A place I never knew that existed in, in my life. And I'm, I hope nobody out there goes through this ever. So I went dark. I kind of snapped. And I did snap. I found this out through therapy later on. Um I started at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock or 10.30 was my time. So I lived in Westchester, kept going but back, back to the Bronx every night, 10, 10.30. And I didn't care about anthrax. I didn't care about my family. I had tunnel vision to do one thing. It was, it was payback time. And it wasn't being tough because I didn't even know what tough was, to be honest with you. It was just something I had to do because I thought this is what my brother would have did for me. So it was one of those things. It was very brother stuff, you know, that kind of vibe. So I did things I never thought I'd do. I talked to the wrong people. I held the wrong things in my hand. Um, I was hunting. I was sitting out places, specific coffee shops. I was sitting outside of waiting for people hours on top of hours, just waiting, just in my car. I had the heat on. It was, you know, I was just, just waiting. Yeah. And this is for two weeks straight in my car, patrolling in the same areas where I thought these people would be or the specific person would be accused, you know, alleged. I have to say that. Um, and, you know, I had heard later on that these people moved to Florida because uh, the cops were on to them, blah, 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 all that good stuff. It's like a law and order, law and order. Yeah. Episode. So, uh, so as I got everything, all my tools that I needed to achieve this, right? I have it in my hand. This is about, I say, almost two weeks into it. And I'm just looking at this thing in my hand, which I never shot. I have never fired a gun. I've never fired a gun in my life because I don't like them, right? Yeah. But this was a different deal. So as I'm looking at this thing in my hand, and if this person walks out the door, I mean, in my mind, this is a done deal. I kept, I started thinking of my mom. And I said, oh, I wanted to, I was going through, how did this happen? How am I here? How am I here right now? And then I'm thinking of my mom who's just crying and just pain, in pain all the time. I'm saying, what would happen if I do this right now? This one or two things that's going to happen. More than likely, I'm going to be dead. Retribution. It's honest. That's the way it goes. Eye for an eye, you hit me, I'm gonna, all that stuff. That happens. That's the reality of life. Or... At the very least, I'm going to jail. So either way, she loses another son. That's just truth. So mm -hmm. this thing's on my head. So then I think on the other side, my brother Anthony, who was always very protective over me, him really looking and just I had him in my head saying, and just saying, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? She's going to lose another son? You know, and just really, he would talk sense into me and almost like, a, almost like a bitch slap. What are you doing? Get the fuck home. He would just tell me straight up, get the fuck home, grow up. Yeah. It brought me out of this thing, man, because I couldn't let her lose another son. It she, the pain is just, it was too too much on one. But to lose another son the same way or even jail, whatever, it just didn't make sense. Because, look, I'm being honest with you, nothing mattered. Anthrax, family, I, you know, I had to do this. But that took me out of this place. Yeah. Got rid of the, the tools and all that stuff. 
and just really, I, I went deep. I, I just went deep into myself and I went into therapy. I went right back into therapy, which is very important. That's why I always tell people, man, if you're hurting, you got to, you got to talk to somebody. You got to, because I was, I was some, I was really hurting uh, to yeah. go dark like that. And then I realized I would have lost my, who's my wife now, my girlfriend also would have lost that. My family, anthrax, it all would have went away. And Anthony would have never wanted that. So that's what pulled me out of it. And, um, you know, I'm glad I didn't do it, of course, of course, because we're here. Oh, and, yeah. I wouldn't be here with you right now. Right. And maybe by that, again, with the book, maybe seeing that. And if you're in a dark place, man, again, there's, there's a way out. There's a way out. I mean, again, I don't want to preach. This is my story. Just if this could help anybody, it's important to me going on in life. Yeah. There's there's foundations that that uh, contribute to these, you know, that help people like this. Specific to musicians, here in Austin, we have uh, the Sims Foundation, which is a mental health program for artists, for musicians. We also have HAM, which is Health Alliance for Austin Musicians, which helps helps uh, musicians because, you know, you're a musician, you're an artist, you don't make shit. Exactly. You eat 20 bucks a day if you're lucky, playing coffee shops or singer-songwriter. It's hard to get a band booked. All original bands don't really, you know, whatever. Of course. This is a way for them to have, have insurance. It's also a way for them to get treatment for abuse. That, that's you, so you, important. Any, yeah, it, yeah. It's so important. And it, it's a head, it's a headspace that, you know, when things aren't going right, let's face it, you go. You know, yeah. things aren't going right in your life. You you start thinking weird things. Uh, so yeah, I I totally believe in that, man. And just go go and speak go speak to somebody. You know, it really it really helped me. I look, I'm still going to go back. I take I take pauses for a while just to get my stuff together again. Mm. Then I'll go back in. Um, I just think it's healthy. Keep you keep me. And look, I'm I'm a work in progress. To, <laughs> to be honest yeah. with you, you know, um, I'm working in progress, but. I, I, I want to get to that place where it's all evened out, you know? I really appreciate you sharing all all of this, like, yeah. intense emotional uh, value, uh, you know, that you have that's been that, – that will be helpful for, other, for others when they hear your story, when they read your book, or if they just meet you and talk to you about it. Yeah, um, thanks, I want to – yeah, man, of course. I, I, I want to switch gears a little bit. Yeah. It, let's play a game called "Is It True?" You mentioned Law and Order a little while ago. Is it true <laughs> that you are on some episodes of Law and Order? I am. Okay, that is true. <laughs> that is true. It's actually an episode called. You know, I've been you know, look again. I say this in other interviews. It's not the fame game. Who gives a shit about fame? I've studied acting over twenty years now. Wow! And I realized through writing this book, a lot of it. Um, is coming from finding out about myself, learning who I was after like the abandonment stuff. And I always was searching for who I am and the acting thing, what it does, it makes you go deep inside of yourself. It really does. When you study deeply, as I studied theater here in New York. Um, it makes you find out you want to know your truth. You want to know your truth. And that's, that's where I, I, that's why I was so, I'm still addicted to it. I still love finding out about myself and what, what, what the quirks I have, what, what brings, what brings it out of me? I find it really interesting. Um, yeah, so I did this. Uh, I've been studying here and then reading for people in New York. It's casting director Suzanne Ryan, she's always liked my work. Casting director of Law and Order, she's awesome. She's always, you know, I've read so many things for her. But the next question is, if you do well in the audition, she goes, well, Frank, are you available? When you're on tour your whole life, you're never available when they need no. you. Yeah. And so this one time, this Law and Order was available, this, this beginning segment, all that stuff. I find the murder and all this other stuff, whatever, the murder. And um, yeah, it was it was nice. It's called The Brotherhood, believe it or not. It's an episode wow. called The Brotherhood. Wow. Wow. It was fun. That's, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't realize that acting was such a driving force in your life until I read the book. And then uh, it was interesting for me to find out just, you know, how passionate you are about it and how often you pursue it, you know, as much as your anthrax schedule allows. But uh, yeah. And you and you've had a few parts. We remember you um, on Married with Children. You know, yeah. that was uh, that was that was a, that was a blast. That was a good time. They were great people, man. I love them. Yeah, yeah. I also did a, a film, an independent film called Greetings from Tim Buckley. I played Richard yeah. Hell. That oh. was fun as hell. Oh. That was great. I don't know that. Right there. So I know, what, I I know Calendar you. Girls. Calendar Girls. Yeah, I know Calendar yeah. Girls. We got we got to work. Me, me, John, and Scott uh, as Anthrax. We got to work with Helen Mirren. In a yeah, scene. that's pretty sick. 
That's pretty <laughs> sick. Fun, so. You guys are having cocktails out by the pool or something. Dude, yeah, that was yeah. – what is it? The, what's the Hyatt on the on Sunset called now? What, what's the name of that? Shit, I don't know. You speak uh, it was one of those Ryan hotels. Out. It was one yeah. of those hotels on the on there. So they, it, it, look, it was fun. We went out there. Mm. They, they it had a couple of days. It was awesome. I remember one of the actresses, one of the older actresses, like who shall rename nameless? Nameless. She comes up after our scene. And she's going, we're going to our trailer. She's going through the trailer. And we're walking. And she, she goes, Frank, do you know where I can get some pot? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, I don't smoke, but <laughs> now I know. It's that's very, <laughs> it's very rock and roll. That's very old school Hollywood. That's very just, uh, ah, normal kind of a thing when you think about just you know actors and work ethic and just trying to relax on set. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I love that whole life. Yeah, it's fun. Old old Hollywood is for me, man. That's uh, the newer Hollywood. Uh, it's it's more about the fame. They, they I like the work. I like the work, and I think that's that's interesting. I do you think? Do you think that? Um, I mean, not. I'm I'm just. This is just scenario, but you know, maybe there is in be some in between time uh, that's a little lengthier than than normal between Anthrax recording, writing, and touring that your phone will ring and you'll get to do some acting and, and sort of visit your, your, visit your insides a couple more times. It's a great question. And you'd said it the right way. See, visit, that's such a great line you just said, dude, visit my inside a little bit more. And they that's want me exactly to write the, they want, they want me to write the lyrics all the time. And I don't know why until people like <laughs> you remind me. So well cool. said, well, that's, really. That's, and I know why but it's, that's it's the really title of your next my inside. Book, I'm going to use that because that, Use it. That hit a note with me because that's what I'm doing with the, the whole acting thing. It's nothing. See, people think it's like the fame garbage you want when you act and you go into acting. I don't give a fuck about it. Who gives a shit about that fame? Right. You want to find out about you. That's what I'm right. doing. How what what can bring me here? And that's it's so important to me. It really is. So yeah, that's that's a great line. Thanks. Yeah, I'm Frank. Right. I, I don't know how much time we have, but I I've got to tell this story because uh, I've right. never been able to tell it to you personally. Um, one of the things you mentioned in the book, first of all, Gene Simmons wrote the foreword to the book, which I thought was awesome. I love it. Um, and you talk about, because you grew up in New York City, um, you and your buddy used to kind of, you were basically stalking Kiss. You found out <laughs> where they where they held business meetings and you found out where they did recordings. Kick ass. Yeah. So these guys, so Frank and his buddy are, you know, following Kiss around and, and to the point that Gene starts to know Frank by name. So he's like, oh, here's those kids again. It's Frank and his buddy. And um, wow. one of the things that you talk about in the book is not only was Gene uh, very accommodating towards you, but then later at some point, uh, Steve Harris from Iron Maiden was much the same way. You you, you saw him in a restaurant or, or a coffee shop or someplace in downtown New York uh, you were nervous about approaching him, but it's some somehow you guys uh, were able to introduce each other. And what, so here's the thing. You learned from Gene and from Steve a lesson in how to treat your fans. And you say in the book that because of those interactions with those guys, you've always taken time to sign an autograph, take a photo, uh, you you don't understand how somebody in your position could not take three seconds to do that and just make that person's day. So here's where I'm going with this. Sure. And and, and to let you know that you 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 are you actually do abide by that lesson. Here's the story. So you're on tour with Iron Maiden, Anthrax and Iron Maiden. You're in San Antonio. It's about 1990, 91, something like that. I go down to the arena the afternoon of the show, because I'm trying to meet you guys. And I've got an armful of vinyl. I've got my Maiden records. I've got my Anthrax records. I've got a leather jacket. And I'm circling the arena. What else can... do you need? Exactly. <laughs> what else do well, you need? A leather, vinyl, uh, I'm a, good a to go. rock, rock show. You got a ticket. You're... I'm That's good a to show go. right there. I'm good to go. So <laughs> I'm circling the arena and I'm trying to meet you guys. And I try a door and it opens. So I walk into the arena, empty arena. Anthrax is on stage sound checking. You guys are doing Judas Priest covers. I can't remember <laughs> if it was Breaking the Law or Living After Midnight. It was something off British Steel. I walk right to the edge of the freaking stage in an empty <laughs> arena. And I've got Anthrax Adidas right here at my nose, you know. <laughs> 
And I'm just having the time of my life. It's like a private concert. And then inevitably some security guy comes up to me and starts, you know, jabbing me in the, on the shoulder with his finger. And he's yelling at my, you know, he's yelling in my face, where's your pass? Where's your pass? And I'm thinking, oh, dude, I'm done. And so, but the music is blaring so loud. I play dumb. Like I can't hear him. I'm like, huh? What? What? Huh? (laughs) And he starts clutching this laminate that he's got around his neck and he's putting it in my face and goes, where's your pass? Where's your pass? And he's screaming at me. And in a moment of desperation, I look up and Frank is like right on top of me on stage. I look up at Frank. I point to him and I said, I'm with Frank. And Frank (laughs) sees all this. Frank sees all this. And he waves the guy off. He's like, dude, it's cool. He brushes the guy away. And I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Fucking worked. Frank just gave this guy the brush off and I get to stand here and watch the rest of this in this empty arena. So that's my Frank story. I always Very call cool. it that. I always call it the I'm with Frank story. I love that, it. that was the line that saved my ass. And then you oh. were gracious enough to kind of brush the play, guy. Play side. along. Yeah. Play along Frank. <laughs> yeah. I'm with Frank. Yeah. It was great. It was awesome. But my point in all that being yeah. that that was a moment when you could have looked the other way, let the guy bounce me out of there. I, I deserved to be bounced out of there. I was trespassing basically, but yeah, you were a fan. It's I important. was a fan and yeah. you've been that fan and yeah. you understood and you got it. And you didn't even know me, of course, but you're like, ah, it's cool, man. He's with me. Just let him stay. I feel, awesome. I feel like at the same time. T- so go I'm, ahead, I'm go sorry. ahead, Frank. Go ahead, Frank. This, no, this was that was a lesson from um, from Steve and and Gene Simmons, the guys who taught me how to be in that position. Look, we're lucky enough to be in this position to have fans. And look, I'm no angel. Look, I'm sure I have my bad days, but I I try not to. If I'm feeling like shit or something like that, I don't want to be around people. I don't want to get people sick and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their normal thing, but um, they taught me. You know what? I'm in this position. Thank you for being there. Thank you for buying my records, be, being at my shows. Look, dude, you, you brought your stuff to sign. How cool is yeah. that? You think yeah. about that. That was me with Kiss. You have to understand me with Gene, me with Steve. And these people taught me, they showed me by being human to you. Steve Harris, for God's sake, he invited me and my friends in. To, we were freezing outside. The quick story is, it's in the book. Yeah. Electric Lady. We find out uh, Iron Maiden is mixing a record at Electric Lady in Manhattan. Greenwich wow. Village, very famous studio, Electric Lady. Yeah, we know where it is. It's freezing outside. We go downtown, freezing our balls off. My friend Tom buzzes the bell. Zzz, right, uh, Electric Lady. Hi, we're here to see Steve. We're fucking two fans, just like you yeah. are, right? We, we we have, but Tommy had balls, so he's not here. He's he's eating somebody. He's out eating. So we go patrolling all around Greenwich Village, <laughs> around the corner, big open picture window. Who's eating dinner? Steve Harris, dude. Steve Harris, he sees us freezing our balls off out there. Like, we're shivering. It's that. It's like New York cold, horrible, right? Mm. We're shivering. He sees us and he gives us the wave like this, oh. dude. The wave. The wave is everything. Dude, exactly. You have to do this, right? Yeah. So, r- proceeds. We go up the stairs into this restaurant. Steve's eating dinner. He's eating dinner. He goes, have a seat, mate. We sit down. He invites us to dinner. He buys us dinner, for God's sake. You know, and we're talking and asking him every available Iron Maiden question in our minds. Think about that. So that's going to go a long way. He's still, Steve Harris is still the greatest and still the same friend. I call him my friend. I'm honored to say that. He's still the same beautiful person. He's always been Gene. Gene remembers those. Gene Simmons remembers those days when Tom and I used to go and ask him for autographs. And yeah, we did know him. There's a lot of great stories about Gene in the book because he was one of my heroes. These yeah. guys were my father figures. Exactly. These were yeah. my father figures growing up. There was nobody else to look for, to look up to when I was young. So I chose these heroes, Kiss, you know, Rush, Iron Maiden, you know, these bass players, they were my heroes. Yeah. So it was well, fun. I, I- I wanted to share the I'm with Frank story because it, 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 I'll great, never, great. I, I will never, ever forget it for as long as I live. So That makes me feel good, dude. Thank, thank you, you so much. I'm, I'm happy yeah. about that one. Yeah. The, uh, Glad it wasn't a dick. The, uh, Not at well, all. <laughs> <laughs> well, like you said, it could have been a bad day. You could have been, I don't want anybody on the bus today, man. Yeah. I'm throwing up. To or, you know, that would, they, if someone doesn't understand that, they can fuck off anyway. So yeah, right, right. you're in someone's house, man. You can't. Here's what I call that. 
um like the steve harris thing you know you guys are freezing he's obviously he sees you what's he gonna do go like this right yeah yeah he, he could have because maybe he's having a bad day fuck i'm eating dinner you know he could it could have gone sideways right. up down anyway just depending on whatever but the fact that he and here's the here's the the punch line he let you in so many so many of my idols i've met and i approach cautiously because i'm so nervous and i'm such a sure. fanboy and you probably know that about me already frank i'm such a that. i'm such a <laughs> fanboy dude I, it's hard for me to uh, I, I, you know right uh you know my idols they've let me in like let me just Hey, how you doing, man? Come sit down. You know, people like that. Just I'll just I won't go into it. It's about you, not me. But no, dude, it's, it's all good though. They let you in. I could say the yeah. same about Metallica dudes in '83 on the Kill 'Em All tour. They let you in. He let of you course. in. So this is kind of a lesson here. When they know you're just a fan, oh look at these punk kids, and they turn your back to you. That's not going to happen because if it does, they're they don't last. They're not going anywhere. Right. I totally agree with you. I totally agree because look, it goes back to the old the old saying, don't forget where you came from. Yeah. Wow. We're always going to yeah. be fans you and I. We're the yeah. same people. You know what? We're always going to I never I, you know what? I never want to lose being a fan because that's mm -hmm. how you lose everything. If yep. you fucking lose that drive, dude, and you're not a fan, then what the fuck are you doing? You're out it for the money, for the fucking money. Yeah. You know, it's not about that. It's that 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 kid thing, that thing we have when we were a kid that fire in our bellies. I never want to, I'm going to do that when I'm, until I'm dead, dude. I want yeah. that fire in my belly. I want to go for it. Fuck that. I want to be the kid. I can't wait till the next thing. I want to be, I want to be a fan. I you want, want I to call be a that? fan of watching you, you know what I call, fans. I call that, it's simple. It's very simple. I call that love. You fell in love with something and you're yep. attached to it forever, no matter Absolutely. what. You're never going to forget that. It's your language, that song, that album cover, that comic book, that movie. Yes. It's talking to you. It speaks your language. The people who don't understand it, it's easy for them to ignore. It's not Absolutely. easy for you to ignore. You're going, what? That's fucking Gene Simmons or whatever exactly. the scenario. What? Yeah. The new Spider-Man. It could insert whatever you love. And that if that goes away, what about this shit? Yeah, I used to like metal. You never liked it in the first place. If yeah. you say, yeah, I used to like metal. <laughs> There's something that sounds kind of assholeish yeah. for me to say, yeah. but you know what I mean? It pertains to your story right here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's the drive. It's the fire that keeps me going. Yeah. I, look, I never, I, look, I'll be honest. I don't think I could ever lose that anyway, because I have such passion for this music and, and just for what I do with it, I, I'm, not only fortunate, but I want to see it survive and I want to see the next generation. I want to see the younger bands come out and hopefully somebody can get what I got out of it. You know what I mean? And help yes. them in their life. Look at the, look what it did for me in my life. Not only, yeah, financially, thankfully, you know, my family and all that stuff, but it brought this kid up from the Bronx, who, you know, the whole abandonment issue. It took me through that. It really guided me. This, this nurturing form of music really brought me through life and said, this is your outlet. When you're feeling bad, you know what? This will make you feel better. I didn't turn to I didn't want drugs. I was never into drugs. And look, some people do. That's fine. That's not my thing. But for me, this music got me out of that zone, and that's more important. And I don't forget that. And yeah, I want to pay it forward because maybe somebody else is feeling like shit, like I did. Yeah, maybe they can they can move on with their life. It's so I true. Your, I think your book yeah. is going to be able to cover a lot of those. Um people that are wounded to not to pick a gory word but people that are wounded who don't really have an answer or are just kind of lost and searching and and all of a sudden a door appears that that they've never seen before and it's the door to that dark place really that you that you admittingly have opened that door maybe more than once but once yeah. you shared was was when you were looking for your brother's murderer uh, alleged murderer so you have to uh, think about what it is that your book is going to do for a lot of people in the same way 
whether they the the stories that you're telling are not exactly the same that doesn't no. even matter they need it to doesn't. look past that and let it be let let it let it relate to them on at least some level like the way that you found the things that you found that made you happy that kept you alive and the fact that you had an incredible support system you know some some people like bond with their parents over sports and here my thing was i was bonding with my 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 father over sports and then when i discovered you know elton john and queen and then kiss i i i couldn't you know i i got along great with my dad my entire life but on his in his eyes is a little missing he rolled his eyes a little bit that i had guys wearing black leotards on my walls instead of guys wearing tight baseball pants you know it, to me it's it, it, he didn't even see the correlation whatsoever absolutely you know, but they're all wearing a costume totally so it's and that's so that's a great analogy right there it really is that's the same thing really it's just another yeah. Another thing, it's just yeah. This guy's got leotards. It's so true, though. Hey, dude. Elton, really. Elton, and Queen, and and Kiss, guys, and Kiss, and Gene Simmons, especially, was we're having way more fun than the quarterback or the pitcher. Exactly, <laughs> way I, more exactly. fun. Exactly. So it made it all makes sense, doesn't it? When we look back now at it, it's yeah. like yeah, fuck yeah, man. I'm glad I chose this path. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I want to I want to also say just for the record that the book although it does explore uh some pretty deep emotions there's a lot of celebration in the book there's a lot of great oh, yeah. uh insight and some fun times talking about Anthrax and Pantera and the Metallica guys and uh you know just uh it, so if you're getting the impression that the 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 book is all gloom and doom it's definitely <laughs> not um, there's definitely a lot of, of, of uh, celebration and good times in there oh, yeah. as well. Just I one of the Pantera a... stories alone would just cure that immediately. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still, I, I'm still hung over from those days. My God. Oh my God. <laughs> but here's, here's another big reveal. Frank is, uh, is very open in this book about a number of things. But one thing that I was really surprised to find out, Frank is a huge Barbara Streisand fan. Wow. I wear it on my, I, you know, I what's love weird? that. Dude, and I, Again, this is this is why I'm raw right now, my friend. This is why I'm fucking raw because it's all out there. Here's here's why. I'll be honest. And over all the mental health, Barbara Streisand. What the fuck? I'm saying Barbara Streisand. Here's why. Because when my mom and dad were fighting back in those early days, you can go away in your room and not and block that out. And she was in those in the '70s, dude. It was all over the radio, right? It it soothed me. It really, her voice is, she's got magical tones and, you know, I yes. wish I could meet her one day. It sounds weird to me to say that, but I wish I could meet her just to say thank you for making me, again, another thing that made me feel better in my life. I would go to her room and listen to her songs and her voice kind of soothed me from the the yelling and the, the ugliness that that was. And so when I say Barbara Streisand, and yeah, and because I remember that and I grew up to be a huge fan because then I really got into her technique and what she does with her voice. And look... As you guys get older, whoever listens to her, you'll understand what I'm saying when you listen to her actually say. If they the haven't truth. already, I don't know what they what's taking them so long because you start to notice things like that when you get older anyway. But I can hear her voice right now, and it just sound it's orchestral. Absolutely, it's like an orchestra yeah. in a voice. Exactly, yes. well said again. Yes, yes. It, it and for me to this day, look, I I remember I paid. But a thousand dollars for me and my wife to go see her on the first um, her first show back. That's how important. That's how much of a note she struck me when I was young. So I just said, I'm just going. I don't care where it is. Yeah. I'm going to see this woman per perform live. And it was awesome. Wow. Um, so yeah, that it's a big deal for me. Oh, people, Frank Bello, Bobby Strait. What kind of you know, what is that? <clears throat> when I was young, man, it was the biggest deal, and still is to this day. I would love to meet her. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. uh, doesn't seem weird at all to guys like me and Dave, though. No, not goes, at all. I'm... It goes back to it's what it's one of the things that you fell in love with. Like Absolutely. I said a second ago, it's exactly it's one of those things. And when you when you hear it, it's speaking to you, and time stops. You're, hey, here you go. You're in the grocery store. Ah, uh, potatoes. Uh, oh, the fucking Barbara Streisand. That's it, dude. <laughs> it's exactly what I do. I'm, I'm, I'm quiet and I just, I'm, all of a sudden it evens me out. It triggers me like that stuff triggers me to level out. I don't know what it, it's a music thing. It's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful music thing. Yeah. If that stuff, if like you just say, Sam, you know, I'm having a shit day or whatever at the supermarket. Oh, I hate this. I got to get this shit uh, and hear her voice. Yeah. Fuck man. 
switch around, switch around. That's the magic of music right there. Absolutely. The music. Man, isn't that, isn't that cool? Like in the, in the 60s and 70s, I really don't remember just in the market with my parents or whatever. I really don't remember, you know, what I would consider my music of, you know, what I liked being pumped in the speakers in the supermarket. I mean, at the skating rink, yeah, it was Alice yeah. Cooper and Kiss and Elton and Queen as all of my idols I mentioned before. But in the supermarket, when it happens nowadays, I feel like a lot of the old money has died out and it's all music. But, you know, there's young people running the franchises yes. now and they can program whatever they want as long as it fits the 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 criteria of what uh, yeah, the, the demographic, the, the brand, you know, right. ha, has will let you get away with. And oh, I hear my friends on the radio in the supermarket now. I'm like, hey, I know those guys. Yeah, you know? it's it's cool, right? It is cool. Yeah, it's, it's the best. I do that too. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. You know, you, any of these stores now have that that whole kind of vibe going on, which is really smart. I think. Yeah, I think it evens so. it out. It's like, all right, and there's another kick to my step today. It's all good, yeah. man. It's all, yeah. That's what music's it, supposed to do. Yes. Maybe I'll stick around and buy some more bread. Yeah, hey, <laughs> it'll keep my me favorite in. song. Yeah, I'm gonna listen to the end of this song, so I'm gonna stick yeah. around. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, we've Smart. got a, yeah. Uh, aisle seven. Uh, we've got a got a, some got a long hair hanging. Mean. We got a headbanger <laughs> hanging out in the in the in the butcher shop, and we uh, get some. Uh, <laughs> loss, prevention, loss prevention over there quick you know i think you're gonna steal a ham and you're just li listening hey man i'm just checking what do you, hey what are you doing i'm just listening to bob, bob to babs leave me alone yeah. Babs. Yeah. Yeah. um you know i want to you know i you've been gracious with your time yeah. we're going on an I'm hour good. here i don't want to sure. keep you any longer i'm good it's i'm good man i'm so, talking to you guys so no worries it's all good so amazing uh you know i the ups and downs and the storylines and the, the peaks and valleys, to use your phrase, that are happening in the book, just in life too, right? Um, when I think about Frank, you know, it's not the only thing I see, but it's quite, um, it's quite iconic. And I see you with, you know, your... You're picking hand down and your left hand up and your your jaw is down to your chest and you're looking out at the crowd and you are still playing the bass with what you know just whenever you got an open an open key right and you're like and your mouth is like and you're it's like you're talking to fifty thousand people at once when you're doing that you're not even near your mic you're what you know you're you're just you're not you're not singing anything but you're like totally um making what I call, uh, you're throwing shapes, but you're not only throwing, sh you know, because, you know, you want the people in the back to see the same show, the people in the pit. Exactly. I get that. That's entertainment. But the people in the back, they want to see you make these large shapes because you're, you're letting them in. He's connecting. Dude, so, so you're right. You're letting on. them in. <laughs> it's like, it's like you're in my mind and that's the God's honest truth. Look, for my heroes that always did this, if I was in the back in the nosebleeds at a KISS show, Paul Stanley, Gene Simmons, Ace, they, even Peter, would make me feel like I was intimate on that stage, like I had first row. They'd reach out. Paul Stanley would put his hand up. Steve Harris, when he puts his hand up like that, I was in the back as a, as a main fan. I was right there with Steve. I want everybody, no matter what you paid for your ticket, I want everybody to feel it. I want Because nobody... Nobody should be left out. It's a party for everybody. We're celebrating. I'm not just playing. We're playing together. This is an experience together. So yeah. I want everybody to feel it in that place. It's, it's so it's so important. That's why I started doing this. I want everybody to have a good time. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're there, we're gonna have a good time. I don't give a shit. If you're in the back back row, yeah, I wanna I wanna make sure you're feeling it, and and I wanna because I need it too. I need yep. your energy. Yep. It's yeah. the truth, right? We yeah, all, yep. and this way we could build up this great energy to have the show and everybody goes home happy, period, yes. right? Yeah. Well, yeah, the, people that, the, the people that buy tickets or just wear rock and roll as an accessory, they don't, they don't understand anything that we're talking about in this episode of our podcast right. today. Anyway, so, you know, when the band is connecting with the audience, it's like that. It's a You know what I mean? Exchange. You're connected. A you're thing. you're it's You're a hundred yards away and you're, you're you're connecting this lightning bolt, yeah. this invisible laser is connected to all of the playing pieces, you know, everything that's on the stage and, and whoever is out there is paying attention. 
Yeah, and exactly. So that character that's up there, Frank, whatever it is, is I was that kid in the audience, though. That's yeah. the whole point. And I want to go, and I always wanted to come out of a show. Like, I left a Kiss show. I remember, oh, my God, that was so good. You know, I want that vibe, that adrenaline rush. You got off the, coming out the doors, leaving the show. It's like, oh, and you just floored. That's, that's, that has to be for me. It has to be like that. I want yeah. to leave people wanting more. It's like, because I was always, I left the Maiden show. Oh, I can't wait to see these guys again. That is why you have to give it all 115%. It's so yeah. important. You're you're inspiring people. I hope so, bro. You speak, know, and speak at the life that. how short this life is, man. Yeah. Right? Let's yeah. let's live the fullest. It's but true. we have to we have to try to inspire each other. And I feel like that connection or it giving it all to make that connection with the audience, you and for them to like leave the the venue the club the bar the the, it is. the stadium whatever it is and go oh my god that was fucking awesome that's it you yeah. you inspired them that's that means more to me than anything because then exactly because it's a paying it forward i got that when i was younger made me feel this so i'm if i'm lucky enough to be in this role to be able to do that dude whoo i i have a, for me it's an obligation i have to make sure everybody's good right yeah that's the way it is. Speak, right. Speaking of that connection, and, and then we'll let you go. I, I wanted to, I just wanted to mention that, first of all, in the form of a question, I wanted to say that your last two albums with, with Anthrax were phenomenal, in my opinion. Oh, I thought you. Worship Music was great. I thought For All, For All Kings was great. Thank you. And um, so I want to know what's on the table, what's up next for, for Anthrax as far as an album. I know you can't really speak about touring because mm -hmm. we're in uncertain times, but can you tell us anything about uh, a follow-up to those two great albums? Anthrax is working. I, I promise, promise my publicist I say this. Anthrax is working on a record. It's going to be very heavy. We're psyched, right? <laughs> but as far as touring, dude, you and I know, all of us, all of us, we don't know what the hell's going to We have a tour book that I can't wait, and I pray it happens for next year in Europe, and hopefully America after that. But as you and I speak, as the three of us speak right here, we don't know tomorrow, yeah. right? So yeah. we can put these things on the books, and yeah, we're booked for these tours. I want to play. I'm letting everybody know. The band Anthrax wants to play. But- promoters then you got legal stuff getting over to the, overseas all that stuff flights promoters promoters don't want to i get it dude they don't want to lose their shirts because if one people one person gets in on a tour shit gets pulled down mm -hmm. everybody loses their shirt mm -hmm. yeah. so it's such a dangerous place so i hope by this time next year as we're talking i hope we talk again i hope that we're in a better place where you and i are going to be hanging out having a coffee or a beer you know what i mean i would love to get back to norm the yeah. real normal, not the new yeah. normal. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's going to be a new normal for a while. I get it. Yeah. But it has to be some, I want to make some steps that way very soon. So I'm, I'm hoping for the best. We have tours. We have a full on tour, European tour book next year. And now they're talking about it, bringing it to America. I would love it, but I think we're all ready, right? We're all ready. Yeah. 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 Well, I think you guys are on a roll as a band. The last Thank two you. albums were really, really strong. I, I, I had them in heavy rotation when they came out, and I still listen to them. So uh, anybody that stopped listening to Anthrax after Persistence of Time, you need to catch, <laughs> you know, you need to catch up. <laughs> the last two Thank records you. were really good. And... Um, Again, uh, I, Jason, you got anything else you want to add? I just want to say thank you, Frank, for being so generous with your time. I really enjoyed thank the you. book. Um, I, I really appreciate all the emotion and the effort and time that went into writing such a great story and sharing so much of yourself and being vulnerable and, uh, and, and for sharing with us today. I, I know a lot of these topics aren't easy to, to relive, uh, but I appreciate you being so honest and open with us today. Well, thank you. And and thank you also both you guys, Jason, too. Thank you guys for really digging in and, and knowing and getting it, to be honest with you. Thank you for understanding where I'm coming from. And again, I'm not a preacher with this stuff. It's just, look, if it could help people, we're all good. And, uh, you know, I think it's important in this time in our life. So, so um, this is my story and I'll stick to it. Yeah. Well, you did a great job. Congratulations. Yeah, Much love and respect. Yeah. Same here, guys. I hope yeah. to see you guys sooner than later. You know what I mean? Hope so yeah, too. absolutely. And with that, we'll wrap it up. I want to thank our special guest, Frank Bello, for joining us today from Anthrax. His new book is called 
tell us, Frank. Give us the title one more time. Fathers, Brothers, and Sons. You can get it uh, on rarebirdlit.com or Amazon, which is which is nice. Uh, anybody, anywhere you get your books. I'm learning how to do this, so I know yeah. I'm, I'm finding out how you can get your books. So I yeah. went to have Barnes & Noble, saw my book yesterday. I was like, oh, shit. It was, it was weird. It's not a record store. It's very yeah. strange for me. <laughs> it's humbling and all that good stuff. So please, if you give it a shot, I really, um, I, I think you'll dig it. Thanks. We'll I try to put, that. we'll try to put the, the link in the description of, uh, of your episode as well. Yeah. That'd be great. Jason, feel yeah. better, dude. I hope you get well soon. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. 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 I'm going to, I'm going to be fine. It's just, it's like a, it's like a bad head cold. You okay. know, that's what it's like. I'm fully vaxxed. So, you know, Good. antibodies are working. Good. It's just rest up and, you know, Netflix. Fluids, all that good stuff, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Just yeah. get it going, man. Feel better. Hopefully, hopefully yeah, you'll thanks. be uh, within a week, you'll be fine. I'm going to be fine, man. Thank cool. you for the love. Thank I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Frank. I appreciate it. On Boys, behalf of my thank you co-host. so much for hanging with me. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day and be safe, okay? Yes, sir. Well. Thank on you, behalf sir. of my co-host, Jason McMaster, I'm Metal Dave signing off and thanking our very special guest, Frank Bello, and thank you all for listening to another episode of the Talk Louder podcast. Cheers, guys. Cheers.